Master Maker. I am your host, Sarah Lovecraft. And here on the Monday edition, our Technique edition, which is, I think what I'm going to transition the name over to, because nobody knows that we're going to stay on Mondays. Mondays are great, but you never know, right? Life happens. <laughs> and people watch this on the replay and they're like, wait, it's Wednesday. Um, <laughs> but this is the Technique edition of Master Maker, where we do focus on techniques and we focus heavily on a technique for an entire month. So the first time or the first month that we did this show we uh focused very heavily on wire wrapping basics we did uh wrapped loops simple loops things like that we started with uh wire 101 if you will and for the second month this month we have been focusing on macrame and i started you from the very beginning we've been working our way through the basics of macrame and today we are going to pick up where we left off last week so I've got a little bit of housekeeping to get to, and then we're going to get right into it. Hello to all of you. Hi, Kimberly. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Debbie. It's so good to see you. So many familiar faces. Hi, Gina. How are you? I hope that you're having a good Monday. I used to not particularly care for Mondays, guys, but now that I get to spend those Mondays with you, it makes my Monday a whole lot better. How are you feeling about it? Hi, Nicole. <laughs> I feel like we were just chatting, Nicole. <laughs> Hi, Tanya. How are you? All right, everybody, so let's do our housekeeping bit, shall we? Guys, you can hit that shop button at the bottom of your screen during any point of the show, right? Anytime you want to, you can hit that shop button. It's going to bring up all of the information about the items that are in today's show. And you can also put those in your cart and check out all while still watching the show. All it does is just make me really small, which is fantastic because sometimes when you are watching something and you navigate away, it's hard to find your way back. I get it. JTV gets it. JTV Extra gets it. So that's why we make sure to make it super easy for you. You don't have to miss anything. However, if you do have to miss something because life does happen, just like we were talking about a second ago, or if you uh, need to rewatch this, let's say uh, your, your items come in the mail and you've forgotten what you were going to do with them, you can always be re-inspired by watching this as a video on demand, which is also super handy. So don't forget about all those things, right? Some great features here on JTV Extra. Also, guys, if you don't mind to hit those heart buttons anytime you see something that you love, whether it is a technique or an item or you are just having a good time and enjoying all of the amazing people in our community that are hanging out with you in the chat, hit those heart buttons. It lets me know that you're there and that I'm giving you exactly what it is that you want. And on the other hand, if I'm not, just let me know. <laughs> <laughs> that being said, ask me questions, right? If you've got questions, I will try to get to them. Sometimes I get kind of in the zone and I don't see them. Um, you, you can use capital letters. Sometimes that gets my, <laughs> gets my attention if you yell at me. <laughs> but I do want you to, to feel like this is as much your show as it is mine. So please feel free to interact with me. And also, if you would like to share this, that is also very, very helpful and a great way to show your love and support of the show. Meaning, if you are part of a Facebook group that allows you to share these kinds of videos, or if you just want to share this on your own personal social media feeds, we really, really appreciate it. Not just me, but the other amazing creators here on JTV Extra. It is a great way to virtually, like word of mouth, get the news out about JTV Extra and all of the amazing creators and shows and content that is available for you here on JTV Extra. Uh, it's a great way, like I said, it's like virtual word of mouth. That is like the number one way to advertise. And we really, really appreciate your help in doing that because there are still makers out there who don't even know about us yet. And it's hard to believe I know, but... <laughs> they belong with us, right? They belong in this amazing community and we want to get to them. So that's really the best way to reach all of those makers out there who don't know about Jewel School, don't know about JTV Extra, don't know about Master Maker. They might not even know about JTV at all. So we want to reach all of those potential community members out there and bring them in community here and we are always looking to welcome in newcomers with open arms. So that being said, if you are a newcomer, welcome to the show. We are really glad to have you. Let me give you a quick little rundown one more time. I know I mentioned it before, but just so that you're, you understand, I do two Master Maker shows a week. I do one on Fridays at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Set your reminders for that. 
where we focus on components and specialty findings and beads. And I show you all the really cool ways that you can kind of think outside the box to help you become a master maker. And here on the Monday edition at 4.30 p.m. Eastern time, set your reminders for those, <laughs> we focus on techniques. And like I mentioned earlier, we have been focusing on macrame for this month. And we are going to pick up where we stopped last week. So I started you at the very, very basics with the half hitch knot, and then we took that half hitch, hitch knot and turned it into something else. Now we're going to take that half hitch knot and we're going to take it one step further and turn it into a square knot, which happens in two steps. I'm going to show you how to do that today. So if you struggle with square knots, this is a great show for you. Don't forget to bookmark this one, save it for later if you need to come back and like I said, watch it as a video on demand again to refresh yourself. Uh, square knots can be kind of tricky for people. So hopefully I'm going to be able to break this one down for you and show it to you in a way that you can follow along with. All right, but before we get started with all of that, I do have items for you guys. I've got things to show you in today's show. We've been kind of talking about the same set of beads, but I've got one little change in the materials list for today's show. So I'm going to turn you around and we are going to get started. All right, guys, let's get to it, shall we? All right, so <clears throat> we had been using, and I'm still going to have it in today's show, um, just because I've got some projects pinned to it, but we had been talking about the macrame boards. If you'll remember the past two uh, shows that we've done on the Monday Master Maker, we had been focusing on the macrame boards. I'm just going to give you a quick little glance at this one because it's not in, it's not on your shop button today. However, I am going to be referring to this uh, a couple of times. You will see it a little bit later. I've got something that will work as well as this and also has some other other uh, what shall I say some some other things that go along with it as well so hopefully I'm showing you all of the the possibilities when it comes to doing macrame what tools are available for you and giving you the opportunity to kind of pick what's going to work best for you. So we have been working on the macrame board. This week, we're going to be working on the Naughty board. Guys, I have the Naughty Do-It-All travel board kit here with me today. This comes with the hardware kit, the DVD, and ebook CD. And I don't know if any of you guys know this. I hope that you do, but some of our new people might not know this. But the creator of the Naughty Do-It-All board is Sandra Younger, and she actually does a wonderful show here on JTV Extra as well. So you definitely want to check her out. If you've not had the opportunity to check out the Naughty board or Sandra's show, you definitely Definitely need to do that because she goes way in depth about the naughty board. I'm just using it for the very, very basic things. However, this is an incredible tool that I 100% stand behind and think is really amazing. And I think you guys will really, really love it, but you're going to get more information from her than you are from me. Uh, just because, like I said, I'm just using this in the most basic form just to kind of attach my work to and measure, which it does just fine. You don't have to get crazy with this board if you don't want to. It comes with a nice little ruler here on the bottom so you can measure your work. There are some bead and ring sizes here for you as well. There's lots of little peg holes here where you can attach your little clamps to attach your work to. I'm going to show you how to do that here as we get started with some of our projects and some of our techniques. Uh, but I do want you to know that this is a fantastic board for that. And you most definitely want to check out Sandra's show because she really shows you all of the tricks and tips that you need to know to get the full benefits of the Naughty Do It All board. It is amazing. And I'm so happy to be able to get to work with one. This is the travel board, which is a little bit smaller than the um, the regular size board. So you can see it's, it's nice and small. I can just kind of talk it over to the side when I'm not using it. I can stack it up with some of the other bead boards that I have and just grab it when I need it. But this is definitely one of my favorite tools. Uh, I love using it. So having the opportunity to show it to you guys and use it with our macrame was really exciting to me. So definitely want to check that one out. All right, now our, our stringing materials are the same. So we've been working with some wax cord <clears throat> excuse me, in moonlit brown and medium gray. This is approximately 720 yards total. Guys, that's a ton. <laughs> And I don't know if you've realized it quite yet, but macrame sometimes takes a lot, a lot of cord. So it's important to be able to purchase cord 
in bulk. You don't want to just end up with like, you know, a yard of cord. That's not going to get you very far. If you really want to kind of deep dive into the world of macrame and get started, you're going to need to have cord and you're going to want to have a lot of cord on hand. These two colors are beautiful. These are going to work as absolutely beautiful neutrals that are going to kind of disappear into your work depending on what it is that you're doing or these can be the accent and this time of year I don't know what the weather is like where you are but I gotta tell you today's the first day I turned on the heat I turned on the heat here in East Tennessee it's a little chilly outside because we are now in fall and these two colors are perfect for your fall designs. I personally love waxed cord because it is already treated. I don't have to add anything to this. I don't have to add beeswax to it. I don't have to do any kind of conditioning to it at all because it already has that wonderful wax coating on it, which is particularly helpful when you're tying knots, right? This is such a cool material because it grabs onto itself. That wax, it really just kind of is super, super grippy and if you don't believe me try to take that knot out <laughs> which listen I'm I'm sure can probably not be a great thing if you've made a mistake in something and you need to go and untie that knot that can be a frustration but if you're counting on that knot to help to secure your work that is a blessing so <laughs> Blessing or curse, it does grip onto itself, which is fantastic. Really, really love this. And again, I can't, I can't get enough of these colors. Plus the fact that 720 yards of this is going to get me a long way in my projects, which is very, very nice. All right, so if waxed cord is not your thing or you're looking for some other ideas for some cord, I've got some milk chocolate Eslon cord. This is approximately 77 meters. Again, this is a ton to work with. You can see by looking at it from the side just how much there is. Guys, I use Eslon for all kinds of things. I love Eslon. This is a great material for macrame like we are using today, but it's also great for just plain stringing projects. It's great for braiding. It's great for crafting. This is just a really, really nice, nice cord. And it's small enough that it's gonna fit through a lot of your beads. You don't have to worry about it being too big. It's also really, really sturdy and strong. Uh, this stuff, though it doesn't have that grippy wax coating on it, it still ties a wonderful knot that is very, very secure. You can add glues to this. You can use your fabric glues. You can use your gel super glues with this. You can even take your gel super glue and take this and dip this down into the container and let it dry and it will stiffen up the end making it very needle like right which is nice when you've got some beads that have smaller holes and you just need your cord to be a little bit more rigid on one end to make stringing a little bit easier for you but again it comes in this beautiful chocolate brown color just like the other two a beautiful color for fall right this is going to be a beautiful fall color for your designs or it's going to work as a great camouflage uh, if you don't want it to be noticed it most definitely can just kind of disappear into your work so Yes, Miss T says Eslon makes great tassels too. I love that. Thanks for bringing that point up. You are right. You can make amazing tassels with this. You can do all kinds of wonderful things with this. So Eslon is, is definitely um, one of my favorite uh, stringing materials. And I tend to get it in a lot of different colors, but I do love a good neutral. I really, really do. It works with absolutely everything. All right, so if you are ready to move on, we will. Let's talk about our spacer beads. I've got some Indonesian inspired tube shape beads in three styles and sizes with a large hole. This is 230 pieces. I'm going to bring all these out. We've talked about these all through the month and we're not stopping because these are amazing so I called these spacer beads but guys they're not they don't have to be I mean absolutely they work as a great spacer bead but they have their own little personality right they have their own beautiful patterns to them and they each come with a large hole. So each one has a nice large hole. This one has the smallest hole out of the three. This one has the next largest hole. It's also a beautiful design with a nice large hole. And then this one has the largest hole out of the three. 
that is 230 pieces that's gonna that's gonna last you a while now why do you want large hole beads well you're gonna want these for a lot of different reasons but one of my favorite reasons to have a good large hole bead is to accommodate multiple strands so you'll notice that in comparison to our stringing material right our eslon is nice and thin but we've got this this large hole bead now why would i ever use these two together you would trust me because this is a great way to thread multiple designs or I'm sorry multiple strands in your design you can use this to kind of bundle multiple strands together like as a cord ender if you wanted to and it still has a beautiful design or you can just use these intermittently throughout your designs where you've got multiple cords or let's say you've taken your s line or your wax cord and you've created some amazing knots right you've done some square knots or you've done some half hitch knots or something else and you want a bead that's going to fit over a section of those this is going to be a great bead for that because you're going to be able to fit this over a lot of different strands whether they are braided together or knotted together it's just really really pretty also it's a great way to kind of extend the life of your beads right because metal beads particularly ones that have a beautiful design on them is a great way to take your favorite bead strand and get the most life out of it let's say you've only got 25 beads but you need more than that that's not quite long enough popping some of these in between those is going to really get the most bang for your buck and it's also adding a beautiful design to the rest of your piece as well these also work great with other stringing materials that are a little bit thicker uh, your nylon cords your thicker nylon cords your cotton cords uh, braided cords like i mentioned or uh, leather which is one of my very favorite ways to use large hole beads so this is a really cool little set here with three different designs super nice to have all right now let's talk about hardware since we're talking metals, let's talk about hardware. One of my favorite ways to end a knotted design, whether uh, it is a, a macrame or a braid or even just some stringing materials, I love a button, right? Button clasps are fantastic, particularly for those of you who have de dexterity issues. If you kind of struggle with like the lobster clasps or the spring clasps, a button is a nice alternative to those. And these Tierra cast fa fashion buttons are gorgeous right? They're so, so pretty. These are in antique gold, silver, and oxidized brass plating. There is approximately 12 here. Uh, let's see, three, six, nine, 10, 11. I'm missing one because it is attached to a design <laughs> that we've done, but there are 12 that I have had in the show here, but you can see each one of them has a different design on them. They're so pretty. They have different little personalities and we all love Tierra cast, of course. So this is a great way to get your hands on some Tierra cast because I have a feeling over the next, you know, year or two, it's going to be a little bit harder to get your hands on Tierra cast. So you definitely don't want to miss out on this this opportunity for sure and like I said 12 pieces so that's 12 designs buttons are great for clasps but they also can uh, double as a bead there's a lot of different ways that you can uh, take the shank on the back and turn it into um, for all intents and purposes a bead right you can wire wrap the back of this you can add some jump rings and you can use this as a focal or um, any other thing in your in your design so it doesn't just have to function as the clasp though I do love to use these for a clasp and that's the reason why they are included in my show all right guys I'm gonna sit these to the side and we're gonna talk about beads because I love a good large hole bead and I've got plenty of them for you now large hole beads like we talked about with the metal ones are really nice for multiple strand designs and for your thicker stringing materials and guys sometimes they're hard to find I just know from personal experience shopping at the box store sometimes a good large hole bead can be a difficult thing to get your hands on particularly a nice quality one so I've got a whole selection of these for you guys I've got a rose quartz strand this is an eight millimeter round bead and it has a large hole you guys have seen me show these to you in the previous shows this month but I can't can't not show them to you again because they're so so pretty rose quartz is always a crowd pleaser lots of people love that rose quartz even people who don't particularly care for pink uh, really seem to gravitate towards the rose quartz because it's not like a hot pink it's not really in your face it's a nice soft pink that's going to work with a lot of different things right super super pretty all right I also have for you 
some smoky quartz. I do love smoky quartz. This is one of my favorites. So smoky quartz, eight millimeter round, large hole bead. This strand is approximately eight inches in length. So again, it's got that large hole. It's going to accommodate lots of different stringing materials. And this is a beautiful color for fall, a wonderful neutral, but a great standalone color as well. So, so pretty. All right, what else have I got for you guys? So I've got Serpentine, <laughs> and we've used this one. So my, my little Serpentine strand is a little mini strand here. This is the Serpentine 8 millimeter round large hole strand that was 8 inches, but we've used this in a project. So the rest of my strand you can see is here, but that definitely goes to show you how long the strand actually is. It's one thing for me to say, oh, it's an 8 inch strand. It's another thing for you to like actually see it in a piece to be like, okay, how much is eight, eight inches of a strand going to actually get me? Well, it's going to get you a bracelet and then some, right? So I've got about an eight inch bracelet here and I still have beads left over. So <clears throat> just keep in mind, that just because the strand is eight inches long doesn't mean that you're limited to an eight inch piece of jewelry, right? Um, when you do the knotting like we have done here, that takes up a little bit of the space. So I had plenty of the beads left over and you can see I've used one of those buttons as well. It's one of my favorites. I love this green. It's a great green for fall, but it also works really well in the spring as well. All right, what else? What else do I have for you? I have got some rhodonite simulant. This is another eight millimeter round large hole bead. This strand is approximately seven to eight inches in length. Now this is a pink that is a little bit more pink. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> Let me say things that don't make sense for you on a Monday afternoon to confuse you, right? No, this is this is just a little bit stronger of a pink color than that pink color quartz that that rose quartz that I showed you so if you're more of a pink fan and pink is a little bit easier for you to work with than other people because I know pink can sometimes be it can be an intimidating color right that's why people like the rose quartz because it's easy to work with if you are seasoned in uh, designing with pink this might be a perfect choice for you but it also works really well with so many other neutrals so don't be afraid of this pink you can see this one has lots of different variations in the color so this is going to work really well with your creams and your browns and your tans and your grays. So this doesn't have to be an intimidating pink. It's really, really nice. And again, that large hole is going to accommodate a lot of different stringing materials, which is awesome. All right, before I move into the rondelles, I've got two other strands for you. This is a strand that is no longer a strand. It happens. It happens, right? So this is the Red Tiger Eye 8 millimeter round. You can definitely see that large hole on this because now it is off of the strand. So this uh, this is a little hint that we are going to use a little bit of this Red Tiger Eye in just a little bit. That's why it is no longer on the strand. But but be be sure to know that it definitely is an eight inch strand. So it's more beads than what you're actually seeing here. But I love red tiger eye. Tiger eye in general is one of my favorites, but the red has always been a very intriguing uh, version of the tiger eye, if you will, because it's not like a, it's not like a stop sign red, right? This is like a sultry kind of brown maroon. It just has lots of attitude kind of red to it. Uh, it definitely works really well as a neutral and is a beautiful bead for fall. Super, super pretty. If you like tiger eye, I definitely recommend trying the red tiger eye in some of your designs because it's, it's a beautiful bead for sure. All right, I've got one more strand of round beads for you. And again, this is a strand that I've used some of the beads. Um, but this is Rocky Butte Jasper. This is a little bit bigger. This is a 10 millimeter round bead, though it does still have that nice large hole. This is an approximately seven to eight inch, inch strand and the colors are amazing amazing if you are into fall colors or you are into neutrals this strand has all of that plus a little bit of like rust red a little terracotta color to it with the greens and the blues and the grays and the creams and the browns like this is just an absolutely beautiful bead to work with and i've been saving it i've had this all month and i just now cut the strand so you can see some of the beads are missing because we're going to use those in our project today but absolutely beautiful strand. I love this. You can mix this with blue. You can mix this with other neutrals. You can mix this with black and it's really cool. So definitely recommend that strand. So, so pretty. 
All right, now I've got some rondelles for you, which is one of my favorite shapes. I have got a fossil stone rondelle large hole. This is approximately seven to eight inches, and this is an eight millimeter bead. This is a beautiful gray neutral, uh, but you can see there's lots of creams and browns in this as well, so you're gonna be able to mix this with a lot. This looks amazing with black, by the way, but it also works really well with pink. So if you're if you're wondering what to mix pink with, this is a good one. This is a really, really nice choice. This also looks really cool with like bright pops of like turquoise and teal. It's just a nice, nice neutral, and you can see each one of those beads has its own little personality. It looks amazing all by itself. If you like rondelles, this is definitely a beautiful strand. Got two more for you. I have some, let's see here, Demortierite in Quartz. This is a rondelle strand as well. Another eight uh, millimeter bead. This is an eight inch strand. This is such a cool denim blue. Now just think of it like this. Anything you wear your denim blue jeans with or your denim jacket with, that's what you can do with these beads. D does that help? <laughs> if blue could be a neutral, this would be it. <laughs> because let's be real, we wear our denim with everything, right? And I know denim comes in a lot of different shades, but so do these beads. If you can see, some of them are darker, some of them are lighter. But like I said, if blue could be a neutral, it would definitely be this denim kind of blue. So this beautiful Demortier right strand in quartz. That is eight inches of blue that you can use with anything. So, so pretty. So pretty. All right, I've got one more strand for you guys, and then we are going to get to work. I've got matte turquoise simulant. This is an eight millimeter rondelle, again, with the large hole, and this is a seven to eight inch strand. This is one of my favorite beads in the show. I like this one mixed with, hold on, I'll bring it back in here. I like this mixed with this, oddly enough, which some people are going to be like, mm, that does not go. But when you mix the right beads from this one with this one, and I'm not talking like the whole strand, but if you pick out and pair them together, like some of the lighter beads with some of the darker beads and vice versa, gosh, so pretty, so pretty. Whoops, wrong strand. <laughs> That's how much I like this strand. I just want to leave it out here so you guys can keep looking at it. <laughs> but you can't go wrong with the turquoise and I do love that matte finish I've talked about it a little bit this month each time we've looked at this strand the matte finish is really really popular bead finish these days and this is just a really cool bead that you can mix with a lot of different things one of my favorite things to mix this with is black it always looks classic with black but you can mix this with browns and uh, grays or multicolors like I just showed you but it's a really really beautiful strand this multicolor strand with a large hole is going to really mix with lots of different stringing materials. So this color on any color leather is really gonna be pretty. Definitely one of my favorites. Debbie says, what's the best way to store my leftover beads? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. As a matter of fact, JTV has got on their website a couple of options for you as far as storing your beads. Um, there are some small containers with the little uh, the little screw on top. I'm trying to see if I've got one here handy. Uh, you definitely want to check out the website because there's a lot of options for storing your beads, but I, I have a tendency to just put mine in baggies. If I've got a lot like this, I may restring this, right? I may take like some monofilament and restring it and then hang it. Because for me, it's easier for me to kind of see what I have if I've got it in front of me. So if I can restring it and then hang it on a hook right here at my workspace, that's a great way for me to grab for it again. Um, but sometimes I'll just put them in like little baggies. But a lot of times I use these little containers. I'm trying to find just an individual it was a good little just one of these little containers because you can still see it so even if you just kind of sit it to the side you can still see what's in there I'm a, I'm a huge fan of clear containers and hanging things up because like I said I'm visual so if I can see it then I know what I have and I don't really have to dig for it but definitely check out the website because there is a lot of options uh, for your storage on jtv.com for sure for sure all right, so let's talk, let's take a little trip down memory lane, shall we? And then we're going to talk about what we're going to do today. So I've got some examples of what we've done so far. So you'll remember I showed you our serpentine strand, 
with the knot that we did the very first week we started working on macrame. This is the half hitch knot and it only happens in one step, right? It is just the P shape over our core. You slide a bead up, add the P shape over the core, pull, and then add a bead up, right? Super, super easy. That is the number one step in macrame, and I've shown it in a lot of different ways. So you can use it like this. You can alternate back and forth with it to create some really cool patterns. You can use it without beads to create an amazing spiral. It's exact same knot, right? It's all exactly the same knot. This just creates a really cool spiral and then you can add your beads in there. It changes the way things look a little bit. It's also the base knot for your micro macrame, which is something like this. So this is like very similar to friendship bracelets, but this is considered micro macrame just because you're doing um, kind of the micro version of this larger knot. You're just doing it on a smaller scale, lots more of it, more rows. And <clears throat> then we worked our way to alternating those half hitch knots on either side, right? Creating a lark's head knot and alternating the directions to create this beautiful kind of lace design with our Eslon cord. This was our project from last week. So we've really been focusing on that half hitch knot and there's a reason for that and that is to bring us to where we are today. The half hitch knot is the base knot of square knots and square knots are this half hitch knot just in two steps. So we're gonna focus on that today. So I'm gonna bring in my knotty board here and we're gonna use this to attach our work to. <clears throat> I'm gonna bring out an example here and just add it to our board. So you can see, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the knotty board, these are the clamps and they fit right down in those pegs and you can place this anywhere on this board to secure your work and to measure as you go. Definitely, definitely recommend this tool. It's one of my favorites for sure. All right, so let me undo my mess here and we're gonna talk about the square knot because the square knot is the next step in our macrame journey. And it is basically what we've already learned, but on the right and then on the left. And I'm going to show that to you here in just a second. So the square knot happens in two steps and I'm going to show you each step, but these are based on the, the knot that we've already done. Okay, so we've worked our way to this point. So if you need a refresher, you may want to go back and watch the other two project videos that we did with macrame. Um, otherwise, <clears throat> this is this is also a great place to start with macrame. Okay. All right, so we've got our core here, which I'm using leather just to kind of show you. The thicker your core is, the wider your knot section is gonna be. It really just kind of helps to show things off. You can do square knots with any stringing material. Uh, that's a question I get asked a whole lot as we've been going through this series with macrame is, well, can I use this or can I use that? The answer is you can use literally anything. I'm just using some leather here as my core just to kind of differentiate between the core and the cords that I'm knotting with, but you can use the same thing you're knotting with as your core, okay? All right, so let me lower you down just a little bit and we're gonna talk about the steps here. So <clears throat> your square knot, you are going to start on the right side, creating a P shape like we have been doing with our half hitch knots, right? So I've got my P shape on the right. My cord is going across the top of our core. This is very familiar territory if you've been with me since the beginning of the month, right? All right, so I'm just gonna kind of hold on to that with my fingers. I'm gonna take my cord that's on the left side and that cord needs to cross over the top of the cord that is now running over here to the left. So my P shape, my cord is running out this direction off the side of the screen over here, right? My left-handed cord crosses over the top of that, but then goes behind and up through the P shape on the right side. And then I pull. That's step one. 
Step two of the square knot is to repeat this process, but do the mirrored version of that. So we're gonna take the left cord and make a backwards P shape, going across the top of the core. And now our cord is running out this direction to the right. We're gonna take the right-handed cord crossing over the top of that, right? You can see where it's crossing over the top right here. And then we're going behind the core and up through that backwards P shape on the left. And then we're gonna pull. That's step two. That creates one square knot. So you have to do both steps in order to get the square knot. If you don't, and you just keep doing it on one side over and over again, all you're doing is the half hitch and you're gonna end up with that spiral pattern. So to make the square knot nice and flat, you gotta be sure you do both, okay? So I'm gonna show it to you uh, several more times. All right, so right-handed cord for step one, P-shape goes across the core. The left cord crosses over that, out here to the side, and then goes behind and up through our P-shape on the right, and you pull. Now we repeat this process, but on the left. So we do our backwards P-shape going across the core. We take our right-handed cord crossing over that out here to the side, and then we're going behind the core and up through our backwards P shape on the left and pull, and that's your square knot, okay? So that's gonna give you a square knot every single time. You gotta do both steps though, and you can see it makes a nice flat knot. So when you look at it from the side, it's nice and flat. This is a wonderful knot technique that is really comfortable to wear because it lays nice and flat up against your skin, which is nice. And it's also a really unisex and uh, universal kind of knot. You can mix and match this with all kinds of other things. So the cool part, well, not that it's not a cool knot all by itself because it is, but some of the cool parts of a square knot are the versatility and where you can add beads to this. So let me let me move you over here to the other side of our knotty board. I'm not going to take this down because we may need to come back to this, but I'm going to come over here to the other side and I'm going to attach something else. So let me just add my little pegs here with my clamps. All right, let me undo some of this so you can see. This is the square knot where we add, there's that beautiful red tiger eye, where we add a bead to the core, which is just one of the versions, right? One of the options. All right, so how would we do that? I'm gonna show you. We are going to continue. So for my pattern so far, I've been doing five square knots. One, two, three, four, five. You wanna know how I, I'm counting those? Let me show you. All right, so you can see with this one, I've only done three. How do I know? I'm counting the little bump on the right side. So here's a bump, one, here's a bump, two, here's a bump, three, here's a bump, four, and here's a bump, five. So I know I've got five full square knots on, th on this little section here. Down here where I've walked away, I stopped at three. There's a bump here for one, a bump here for two, and a bump here for three. So I've only done three, right? And I'm ready to do two more square knots and then I'm gonna add a bead. Linda says, do you count the knots in between or just eye it? So that's totally up to you. I like to count. I'm one of those people who likes to have everything nice and even um, every single time. So I will count the knots in between, but you don't have to if you don't want to. You can eyeball it if you want, um, but this is a, a good way to count those little knots if you're gonna if you're gonna keep up with it. So it's just a little bump here, bump here, and a bump here. That lets me know there's three full knots, right? So let's do two more. All right, so I'm gonna do the right. I'm gonna take this off of here real quick. Scoot that out of the way. All right, so my P shape with my right cord going across my core. My left-handed cord crosses over that and then goes behind 
and up through that P shape and then pull. That's step one. Step two, we're going to repeat that, but we're going to do it on the left. So we're doing our backwards P shape on the left, going across the core. Right cord crosses over that and then goes behind and up through our backwards P shape on the left and then you pull. Now we've added another little bump, so I know I have a completed knot. So there's one, two, three, and four. There's that completed bump right there. So if I walk away from this in the middle, right, let's say, let's say I get to this point, okay, and oh my gosh, I've got to get up, right? The cat knocked over a glass of water. Who knows? Who knows what happened? But I had to get up, right? For whatever reason. And I come back to this and I'm like, okay, now how do I know where I was in the process? Because life happens. You can't always stop exactly where you want to stop, right? So how do I know? How I know is by those bumps, right? Those little full bumps. And I'm always counting on the right. So it doesn't matter if you are right-handed or left-handed. The side where you start, which normally for a right-handed person is on the right. If you're left-handed, some people like to start on the left. But your where you've started, which for me is on the right, is where I'm going to count those full knots. So there's one, two, three, four, but... When I look at this, there's not a full bump here, right? I've just got my cord. It's coming out. It's coming out the top straight at me. Okay, well, that's not, that's not a completed knot. That's not a bump. So I know that where I need to pick up is with the second step of that knot to make the backwards P shape on the left, cross over with my right, and come up or cross behind with my right, come up through my backwards P shape on the left and pull, that gives me that finished little bump so I know that that knot is complete. Now the reason that I say this is because <clears throat> if I were to tell you always count on the right, I would be doing you a disservice because I start my square knots always on the right because I'm right-handed. If you are left-handed and you start yours on the left, you want to count the full bumps on the left side. Okay, so it, that that's really just kind of like for you and, and which one works for you. Um, but where you start is going to be, whichever side you start on is going to be the bump that you're going to count. Okay. <laughs> when he says cats never do things like that. <laughs> sure they don't. Sure they don't. You guys, one time I had a, um, I had a cat locked in the office with me and I didn't know it. She was being really, really quiet. And I started one of my master maker shows on a Friday afternoon. And wouldn't you know, it's really quiet and I'm working on something and she jumps up on the back of my chair. You guys can't see it, but scared me <laughs> so bad. And I had to keep my composure because now I have a cat that's like walking around the back of my chair. The joys, I tell you, of cat ownership. <laughs> Having a cat in the studio when you don't know one is there, oh, they'll let you know real quick. All right, so I've done five knots here, and now it's time to slide up a knot or a bead. So my beads for this design in particular are in the core, right? So I'm sliding them up from the core. In other words, I preloaded my core, which was two pieces of leather with my large hole beads, and I'm just kind of sliding those up, and then to to create the square knot you're just going to knot around that so p shape on the right crossing over the core take your left cord cross over that go behind the core and up through your p shape on the right and pull and you're just going to knot right around that bead it's going to lock that bead in place and you've got a nice little core or i'm sorry a nice little frame on the outside of your bead made out of your cord right all right, so then step two to really lock that in place because you can't just leave it like that. You got to finish the knot whether there's a bead there or not. So we're going to do the left side, our backwards P shape, taking our right-handed cord, crossing over that, going behind and up through that backwards P shape on the left. Okay, and pull. And there's our knot. All right, so let me speed up here. There's the right, here's the left, there's knot number two. So we're going to do the right, pull, 
we're going to do the left and pull. There's knot number three. On the right, and pull. On the left, and pull. There's knot number four. We're going to do one more. So, P shape on the right, left cord crosses over, goes behind the core, up through our P shape, and pull. And then repeat that on the left. So our backwards P shape, right cord crosses that, goes behind and up through our backwards P shape and pull. There's five and we're ready to slide up another bead, right? Now, one thing that you want to keep in mind is that you want to try to keep even tension with all of your knots. You'll know, you'll notice I'm not pulling really, really, really hard. I am making sure that my knot is nice and secure and nice and tight, but I'm not like giving this like crazy, you know, super, super pulled or anything like that. I'm just making sure that I have nice tension and that I'm using the same amount of tension for every single one of my knots. And that when I add a bead, I don't change that tension either. Sometimes when people very start out with their square knots when they're first getting started, they are a little intimidated by that bead. And so they don't use the same amount of tension. And what ends up happening is, is that then your bead, either you've pulled so tight that you've pulled your two edges away from the outer edges of the bead. You can see how this is more towards the top of the bead instead of being on the outside edge. So they'll pull it too tight because there's a bead there and they feel like they need to overcompensate or they don't pull it tight enough and it's really loose around the bead and the bead kind of spins around and kind of has a mind of its own. So you just want to be sure that you're using the same amount of tension for your knots, whether there is a bead there or not, just so that your beads have the same little frame on each each side right and you can see that the cord is sitting right up against the edge of the bead there's not any room in between there okay all right so that's one variation I'm gonna show you the other variation so let me move this out of the way now you'll have to excuse me I'm using the macrame board <laughs> for this now I don't have the macrame board in the show today but you can still grab it if the naughty do-it-all board is it's not, not your thing, right? Because we've got either or here. All right, now what if you add your beads to the outside edge? That's a variation. Now I've used some large beads here just to kind of show you what is possible. However, this square knot with beads on the outer edges instead of on the core can be really, really cool. You can add any size bead. And the, and the same is true with if you add your beads to the core, right? Those beads that I was using were eight millimeter red tiger eye. However, I could have been using seed beads. I could have been using cubes. It could have been anything, right? And the same goes for when you add the beads to the outside edge instead of the core. You can literally use any that you want and you can use as many as you want. So where I have used one rondelle on the outside edge, you could use I don't know, five or six seed beads if you wanted to. You could use three or four crystals if you wanted to, like smaller bicones. It's totally up to you. The square knot is so versatile. There's so many options. So how would you go about doing this? Well, instead of sliding a bead up on your core, you are going to, where are my beads? <laughs> I've lost my beads. Let me use, let me use a different bead here. Use a little bit smaller of a rondelle here. Instead of sliding your bead up on the core, you're going to add your bead to your left side and your right side. Now, one step further with this is you can add beads to both. So if you wanted to make some really cool flower designs, you can slide a bead up here, right? A bead on your core. And that could be like the center of your flower. And then either edge, instead of adding just one bead, you could add a couple of seed beads and it looks like flower petals. So you can, you can quite literally add a bead at any point, anywhere in your square knot, which is fantastic because it opens up a whole world of possibilities. Now, if you just add them to the outside edge, this is what you're gonna have. Your core is gonna show, as you can see, my leather is running through the middle here and I'm still knotting just like normal, but 
I'm knotting with the beads on the outside edge or on my two edge cords that I'm knotting with so they are gonna sit on that outside edge, right? So let's do one more with the beads on the outside edge and the knot doesn't change, right? All of this and the knot stays exactly the same, whether you're adding beads to the core, to the outside two cords that you're knotting with, or both. The knot remains the same. Take your beads, drop those down. You're still going to do your P-shape on the right, right? You're going to take your left-handed cord, cross over that, go behind and up through your P-shape, and you're going to pull and you're just gonna place those beads right where you want them. And then you're gonna finish that with the left side. So you're doing your backwards P shape across the core, right cord crosses over that, goes behind and up through, and then you pull and that's gonna set, right? So you've got tons of design possibilities here, right? Not only that, but this design where the beads are on the outer edge, it makes your core part of the design. Whereas with this one, where the beads are on the core, you don't really see the core unless you see it in between the knots. See how you can just see like the little whisper of the leather that I used as, as, the, as the core? That's, it's, you know, Take it or leave it, it's, it's kind of camouflaged. If I use like lime green as my core, you'd probably see that. But for the most part, the core kind of disappears, right? But for a design like this, it is actually part of the design because you're seeing some of it exposed. So you take that into consideration. Now my color choice combinations here might not be the best, but it's a good example because you've got the brown and then you've got the blue on the outer edges. So you can really kind of decide, okay, what do I want? The, what do I want the core color to be? Because it's going to show. What do I want my cord that I'm going to be knotting with? What color do I want? Because it's going to be showing as well as the B. So taking all of those things into consideration, this is also another design idea with the square knotting where the, where the tension is going to be really, really important because if you pull really tightly with these beads on the outer edges, they're either going to move, you're going to pull too tight and they're going to sit on top of the core, right? Like that and you're not going to see it or it's going to kind of see how this one I've pulled it so tight it kind of distorts and kind of makes your core kind of instead of it being nice and smooth and straight where I've pulled too tight you can see it kind of has some waves in it so again your tension is really going to be super important and and making sure that you're using consistent tension the entire time and that when you've got your core something soft like leather that you don't want to pull too tight because you're going to kind of distort it a little bit so you take all of those things into consideration right all right, another alternative, we're getting towards the end of the show here, but I did want to show you, there are so many other things you can do with square knots. I could spend another two hours explaining and showing you examples of what is possible with just the square knot. Um, but I don't have that kind of time, but I did want to show you one other possibility because we do have these two beautiful colors in the waxed cord. You can use more than one cord for your square knotting. And I only have the two colors here, but you could imagine doing this with six different colors and it's gonna go exactly the same way and you're gonna have this beautiful rainbow effect on the outside. So I've only got the two colors to work with here, but you can see how this would work out. So <clears throat> I've got a brown knot on the bottom here right? So I'm ready to pick up the gray. So I'm just going to take the brown out to the side. I'm going to pick up the gray and I'm actually going to cross that over the top of my brown. And I'm just going to do my square knot with my gray, just acting like that brown cord is not even there, right? So there was the right side. This is the left side. and pull and then I'm going to pick up the brown cross it over the gray and then not with the brown pretending like that gray is not even there and then doing the left side and pull 
and then pick back up with the with the gray and alternate as you go down and what ends up happening is you get this really beautiful back and forth color with just the two it's just a, a back and forth when you have more colors than this and let's say we instead of two chords we've got like i said six or seven you're gonna get this beautiful kind of fishtail braid effect on the outside edge so you're gonna have your flat core where those those chords are nodding but then you're gonna have this like rainbow kind of fishbone look on the outside edge that is the transition of those colors and it's just a really cool kind of fun way to play with the square knot so square knot a lot of people mistake the square knot as the first thing that you should learn with macrame I backed that up for you and started with the half hitch knot because the square knot wouldn't exist without the half hitch knot however once you make it to this point in macrame with the square knot all of a sudden the possibilities are endless and you can come up with so many different creative things that you can do you can then take this design where we're using more than one chord and you can alternate beads put beads on the core put beads on alternating strands and really come up with your own really unique amazing designs that's what makes me really excited about macrame and why i was so excited to show this to you guys and to focus on this for the month of october is because it is, for me, I feel like macrame sometimes gets kind of left in the dust, right? We spend a lot of time with wire wrapping and with bead weaving and, you know, with other things where macrame kind of gets overlooked sometimes, but the possibilities and the design possibilities are endless. There are so many variations of a knot and so many variations of that knot when you include beads. And at what point during that process you add the beads, you can really come up with some incredible designs. So uh, I hope I've inspired you. I hope I continue to inspire you. I want to show you one last thing before we say our goodbyes for the day. This was just where I had taken a couple of different beads and or a, a couple of different uh, variations here. So I started out with just square knots and I did several square knots to start with and then I added my beads to the outside edge. Now you can see my mistakes where I pulled too tight and I've kind of distorted the leather cord here because it got in a hurry and I wasn't paying attention, um, but I still added these beautiful beads to the outside edge did a few more of the square knots without anything, and then I slid a bead that I had attached to the core up into the design, and then did some more square knots, and then did some on the outside edge. So you can really kind of alternate and create amazing things, right, by alternating. And if I wanted to take this one step further, I could have added beads to this outside core, or this outside cord here on either edge, or just one edge, Lots and lots of variations here. And then I could even come back in with a beading needle and some more of my thread and go through the hole on these outer beads and create fringe, right? So many possibilities. It's very exciting, at least for me. Yeah, I don't know if you can tell. I'm kind of passionate about macrame. <laughs> It's one of my favorite techniques. I feel like um, I feel like we could spend a whole lot of time on it. But the square knot, at least the basics, I've been able to share with you today. And uh, I hope, I hope that I have inspired you. And I hope that you are feeling as excited about macrame and square knots as I am. I could, I could literally go on and on. <laughs> I won't though. I won't because <laughs> we we only have two minutes left, and I, there's not a lot I can do in two minutes. But um, I'm hoping that I'm I'm at least inspiring you to consider because you can get online. Uh, there's you know tons of places online where you can you can check out the variations of square knots and half hitch knots. Now we're not done. We're not finished, right? We're going to get back together on Monday of next week, same time, same place, 4.30 p.m. Eastern time, and we're going to take this one step further, right? Uh, there's, there's still so many possibilities, so we're going to get back together again next week and, uh, and do some more macrame, right? We, might, we may mix some of these things together and see what we can come up with, right? Do a fun project. All right, guys, so that is it for me. Don't forget to set your reminders for Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern time for our Ma 
Master Maker on Friday, uh, where we focus on fun things like components and specialty findings. I've got some black and orange for Halloween for you coming up on Friday, so you don't want to miss that. Definitely set your reminders for that. And if you can't make it to that, I will see you right here, same time, same place, next Monday at 4.30 Eastern. And uh, until then, you guys have an amazing rest of your afternoon. Go make some knots, right?